Will you consider this? Anyone in central Illinois pretty much knows that Morton, Illinois is the pumpkin capital of the world. Although there are other cities and towns making that claim, but we have our allegiance. Anyway, ever wonder how long the village of Morton has been around? Our next guest shares a brief history of the village and gives us a heads up on growth and changes. If you've been around for a while, you know the Morton High School teams are the potters. But do you know why? And how is that pumpkin pies put Morton on the map as over 80% of all canned pumpkin is processed right here? Lee Ann Brown from the Morton Chamber of Commerce brings us up to speed on that. Hello there, good morning. Good morning or to good you. good evening or whenever this is going to air. <laughs> yeah. But look at you, proudly wearing your Morton shirt and it looks appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, so let's start with Morton's been on the map since like the 1800 mm -hmm. census. Yes, yeah, a lot of uh, German descents. Uh, certainly uh, Morton pottery is a uh, much of Morton's history. Uh, several pottery uh, operations throughout the, uh, Morton's history and uh, the Morton Public Library still sits on uh, the original Morton pottery uh, facility. And a lot of Morton pottery can be viewed and explored still in uh, inside uh, the Morton Library. And it's, it's a collectible now, as I understand. And are, are there certain pieces that are still being manufactured, made for people who want that piece of Morton? There is not. Uh, there is, a, a, we know several um, a family still owns some of the mold, so maybe uh, in the future somebody could uh, start producing some pieces again, uh, but no active uh, artists or, or pottery um, being made currently. Well, Morton, uh, and I live in Peoria, and when I first moved here, it's Oh, Morton, very exclusive, very tight-knit community, but it's it's not that exclusive or, or snooty or anything like that. I mean, you welcome everybody coming in. You have a lot of different restaurants mm -hmm. and, and um, Main Street shopping. Well, not Main Street, but, you know, yes. on a Main Strip. Uh -huh. How's that? Yeah, it's actually Main Street downtown. Uh, yeah, you know, Morton has a diverse um mix of industries and so our daytime population really ramps up so a lot of people get to come and have that quality of life workplace uh, opportunities in our community and get exposed to the type of community you are but yes there's a lot of uh, people that have been living there for three four plus generations um, just a lot of community pride there's a lot of uh, connected community is what I say often uh, just such loyal support, uh, a lot of uh, church families, a lot of community projects. Our Morton Community Foundation continues to grow, and we certainly see it with the Morton Pumpkin Festival, just the people that just show up year after year to do their tirelessly roles that they engage and help us um, really pull off a successful festival. And, and most of them are Mortonites mm -hmm. or Potter, Potterites? Yes, Mortonites, yes. Mortonites. <laughs> yes. Mortonites. Okay. Yes. Um, all right, let's, before we get to the pumpkin festival, because there's a lot going on, what, uh, so you have Caterpillar, mm -hmm. um, and you also have Morton Industries, yeah. and, and what else, that you, three, three, four big industries that are basically? Yeah, so uh, uh, a lot of manufacturing, um, fabrication, building trades, and logistics. Uh, so yes, Caterpillar, their worldwide global headquarters is, is in uh, Morton, uh, housing and moving uh, millions of parts uh, across the globe. Uh, certainly, uh, Growmark is uh, another, yeah. uh, they expanded this way with uh, various operations in, in our community, Morton Industries, uh, Parker Fabrication, uh, Morton Buildings, uh, of course, a long, long history in Morton. Um, just a fascinating story of interlocking fencing company. And now you can see a Morton Buildings um, anywhere you travel in the U.S. Uh, and then our uh, recent project, uh, Precision Planting. Yeah, tell With, me about that. Yeah, so Precision Planting uh, headquarters in, in Tremont. Um, their parent company is ADCO. 
but they are on the final stretch of um, their 530,000 square foot facility in Morton that will be their distribution center. So again, logistics because of our interstate corridor mm -hmm. and the, the rapid uh, connectivity to Chicago, Springfield, St. Louis, Indianapolis, over in Iowa is just a great fit for so many logistics uh, companies. And so precision planning, um, they had a presence in Morton and uh, out, outgrew their facility and um, they are probably on the horizon of um, maybe expanding much sooner than later uh, yet again hmm. with their growth potential. And where is, will that be situated? It is right off, um, right off the interstate. So if you exit and um, you, on 155 there and you're on Birchwood Route 98, mm -hmm. there is uh, Erie. You turn on Erie and uh, the north side there is um, the building. You, you can't miss it from the interstate. Uh, beautiful construction project. Uh, just the technology inside is um, going to be incredible. Mirrors what Caterpillar uses for their uh, product picking system and, and Amazon. Uh, of course, you know, logistics, G&D. Um, is there also, right? Great company, truck centers. I mean, just so many uh, trucking and logistics companies, um, specialized manufacturing, and of course the healthcare industry is growing um, with uh, OSF, uh, Carl Health, and now Springfield Clinic really ramping up operations in our community. And you have a lot of pride. Yes. A lot of pride. Well, a lot of people think, oh, Morton, it's so far away. Really, from downtown Peoria, it's what, 10 miles? Yeah. So Easy. I, I'm not exactly sure how people figure that out, but they, <laughs> they do, that's for sure. Um, okay, let's talk about um, the Morton Pumpkin Festival. This year will be its 57th. Yes. All right. So years. it started, we think, 1966 57. or 67 or Seven. yeah. If, if it depends on if you count that first one as number one or if you wait to the first. Um, so the theme this year is farming pumpkins. And who came up with the theme and how do, how do you do that? How do you decide on that? Yeah. So after a prior year festival, we send out a survey and we try and get some genre ideas of interest for themes for the next year. And then we have a pumpkin festival advisory committee and then our chamber board of directors uh, take, take all that input and start to really just strategize of what would make sense, um, what kind of products, um, services, entertainment, pumpkin uh, parade floats, all those elements that we host during festival, uh, you know, which theme kind of makes, makes the most sense and that people can rally behind. And the core mission of our pumpkin festival is to gather and give back. And so we always want to make sure that um, that can be elevated throughout the theme. And this one, we're certainly excited about Farm and Pumpkins because it celebrates the history of Morton. Mm -hmm. It celebrates the history of so many founding members, families of our community and the surrounding area. Uh, how critical the ag industry is to, to Morton and, and well beyond the, um, the globe. Uh, but certainly be able to, to highlight and celebrate um, all of the ag tech, the innovation that's happening in the agricultural space, and then certainly celebrating uh, Libby's, the Nestle. Which was, right, that was from the early 20s, was that? Yeah, so they originally were in Eureka okay. as a canning, and then uh, when they moved over to Morton, they were canning um, vegetables, um, mostly carrots and um, peas. Uh, potentially green beans, uh, a variety. And then they started uh, to move into the, the pumpkin production, which took off and now it is solely a pumpkin producing plant, uh, still producing 85% of the world's canned pumpkin. That's incredible. Yeah. That's so a lot of pumpkin. A lot of pumpkin. So it's just, you know, families will come over and just simply watch the trucks coming in to, into town and with the um, big loads of yes, pumpkins being lifted up into the plant watching the pumpkins enter uh, the plant uh, to begin their their process journey into um, being the canned pumpkin just <laughs> incredible story it's a proprietary seed um, single ingredient um, and then the any leftover product it's uh, they're fully um, operating as a green uh, company uh, leftover seeds are um, a product for squirrel feed um, chuck a nut is produced huh. of the leftover seeds 
Chuck a nut. Chuck a nut. Um, yeah, I was wondering that. I, I didn't know if they were used for, you know, edible pumpkin seeds or if they were used for planting then. Um, it's just kind of a full circle. Thing. Yes, yeah. So um, we're certainly excited with Festival de Bell to, to elevate and, and share their story. Uh, we have just incredible partnership with Nestle uh, Corporate out east and we'll be cross-branding uh, a lot of our product um, is, of course, pumpkin at festival. We have mm -hmm. some of your kind of festival fanfare uh, mainstays, but a lot of our product is pumpkin uh, products. Right, so there's pumpkin pancakes, uh -huh. pumpkin ice cream. What's the weirdest pumpkin combination that in your lifetime that you've experienced? Oh, no, I heard one the other day of um, pumpkin brats. Hmm. Um, so I, I don't know how I've it could be I've not tried that one, but um, one that kind of catches people off guard um, with our festival is our pumpkin chili. Okay. And, uh, you know, a, most people really enjoy it um, and uh, are excited to try that one on, on the pumpkin chili. But we're excited to cross-brand uh, that all that product is, of course, made with the Libby's Nestle pumpkin, and we'll be labeling it this year, um, really celebrating that it is truly locally made right here, um, just down the street, um, and come get your taste of, of Libby's at the Morton Pumpkin Festival. Now, um, so do you bring um, uh, field trips there when the pumpkins are being loaded, or is that, uh, or not you don't do it, but Nestle Libby would yeah. do that, to let the kids really experience what's going on? Yeah, they could be outside viewing. Um, of course, a lot of things changed many, many years ago, 9-11 mm -hmm. um, being one of them, and so inside plant tours aren't aren't available Aren't years ago. Uh, and I, I've talked to um, adults today that were um, on those tours, that and that was that. a major, major highlight of uh, their grade school uh, age years of being in the in the plant and what fun and so it's just it was just one of those happenstance one of those serendipity things that pumpkins were grown and then they were taken to that plant and boom 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 one thing after another after another and we have the pumpkin capital of the world yes yeah uh, you know just uh, truly rich, um, right soil for, for pumpkins here in our immediate area. And then the next kind of crop of pumpkins is um, towards Southern Illinois. So uh, all the pumpkins are harvested here in Illinois and, and trucked in. And uh, just prior to the pumpkin festival, there was a kind of a harvest festival that really, uh, as things aligned there, um, it quickly became the, the Morton pumpkin. pumpkin. Mm -hmm. yep. um, does um, Libby's, Nestle, do they put any of the recipes on their cans that have been developed for the Pumpkin Festival, or do you know if that's happened at any time or yet? Yeah, so we do a recipe challenge, mm -hmm. um, and of course the, all recipes have to be produced with um, a portion of Libby's uh, pumpkin. Of course, you know, a lot of people on all their cans is the pumpkin pie recipe. Right. And so we also partner with a local company, um, the cookery that produces, bakes all of our pumpkin pies for festival. Mm -hmm. So, you know, using their recipes. And then uh, the corporate chef uh, with Libby's is uh, a part of uh, celebrating and bringing awareness to our recipe uh, challenge event. So certainly, uh, you know, we have had our own recipes. Uh, we make our own ice cream as uh, the Morton Chamber of Commerce. We have our own ice cream machine. And it's a nice color. You know, it doesn't look <laughs> pumpkin-y, so it wouldn't turn anybody off if it's too yeah. pumpkin-looking and they're not pumpkin pie fans. Uh-huh. So, so speaking of pumpkin pies then, how many pumpkin pies are made each year for the pumpkin festival? Typically about 1,500 pies. Gee. Uh, then we have another partnership, uh, a local company uh, for pumpkin donuts. Uh, we order roughly 46,000 pumpkin donuts. <laughs> okay. So. And, and they're served the entire, the entire festival. Yeah. And, and it's always the second weekend of September, so always the weekend after Labor Day. 
Is that right? So it would be the 13th or the 16th okay. this year. So opening ceremony will be on Wednesday the 13th and it runs uh, till close of evening on that Saturday. All right. Now, what's new for this year's festival? Because you, you try to mix things up a little bit all the time. Yeah, of course the theme each year really sets, you know, different um, just atmosphere. Certainly the parade is different every year because of the theme. Uh, different products that we can sell. So this year we're partnering with Top Fox, another uh, regional company that produces pumpkin seed um, product. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of different flavors. So oh, had no uh, idea. Yeah. Different so, flavored pumpkin seeds? Uh -huh. Oh, that's so interesting. So pumpkin spice, caramel apple, salt and pepper, barbecue, uh, a whole Probably product Probably habanero line. or something, too. <laughs> yeah, there's always a hot item, right? right? exactly. Um, so we're excited to, to showcase them and uh, sell the, the pumpkin seed product uh, on grounds. And then last year, and we're really ramping up, uh, we did a family fun patch uh, area of just really a local spotlight to where we can elevate all the great uh, organizations and businesses um, throughout Morton and beyond. Um, we have some booth space up there, the pumpkin decorating tent over there, and then Libby's, um, they set up there, Libby's Nestle booth over there. So just a great, fun family, a lot of um, no-cost activities for families and kids to enjoy. Well, speaking of cost then, it, it takes a lot to get this thing going in the first place. Then what do you do with profits? You yeah. have a give back program, correct? Yeah. And yeah. tell me about that. So uh, each year, as I mentioned, uh, festival mission is to, or mission is to gather and give back. And so each year we adopt a community give back project and allocate up to $25,000 to that project, or sometimes it's been multiple projects, uh, depending on uh, proceeds of the festival. Uh, last year we purchased uh, a weld simulator for Morton High School and the junior high uses it as well. And that's uh, so that they get experience with welding in a very safe, yes. you know, not, right, they can't, they can't damage framing. anything. Yeah, yes. exactly. They yeah. can't hurt themselves or anything else, all right? Yeah. Uh, years past, we've done pavilions at the park. We've done projects with the library. Uh, we've done our uh, planters that are in our downtown district. Uh, we did the Welcome to Morton signs. So just a lot of uh, various community projects that are, you know, out there, very visible, open to the public. And mostly nonprofit and youth, or... Uh, well, then separately from that project, um, we started several years ago uh, another endowment fund to build um, this mission and we offer a financial give back to youth groups and nonprofits that come on site and help us host festival. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly Friday, Saturday shifts, but then throughout, you know, we have a partnership with our drive through uh, a partnership with our pancake breakfast for direct uh, give backs to various organizations. But last year, um, from those funds, about $45,000 was issued back to those groups for helping us host festival and carry out our festival mission. And how many volunteers are needed for that three-day weekend? Yeah, we easily onboard 1,500 uh, volunteers. It's crazy. Yeah, we still welcome about 75,000 people to um, the Morton Pumpkin Festival. Each year. Each year. And you pray for rain, I mean, no, pray for, for no, no rain. rain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, right now we need rain. Yes. Um, so we want we want good weather, not too hot, not that's too right. steamy. Nice fall, fall days. Right. All right. Well, so that's fun. And then you had a new program, um, a new one this year, Pumpkins Got Talent. Yes. Tell me about that. Yeah. So we added that. Um, of course, you know, there's a lot of fun TV shows still out there. And, you know, what better way to celebrate all the amazing talent that, you know, our God-given abilities that we can allow people to get on stage and, and showcase and have some fun. So we're excited about opening that up. Um, we did kind of a lip sync version of it last year and just said, let's open it up and see what other talent um, can be showcased. So, yeah, registration's open. There's different um, age groups, and um, it will be a fun um fun way to close out our festival of seeing. Oh, it's at the end. Yes. Okay. So right. uh, local Morton and well beyond. We welcome uh, anybody to sign up for that and come so out. So singing, and, dancing. Yeah. Um, Magician, uh, magic tricks. Um, yeah. Unique music, musical um, okay. talent. Okay. Any, yeah. Well, that's fun. Um, what else is happening in Morton? I know that there's some expansion going for uh, 
Walmart. Um, what's happening there? Yeah, kind of a uh, you know cool story of uh, Walmart's been a great uh, local partner. Uh, they do a lot with us for for festival, do a lot of give back to our community, and uh, our Morton uh, store is being remodeled for their uh, their future um, store concept. So that's well underway. They did a, a pretty massive uh, extension uh, addition to their building to house their online orders and then revamping the entire inside of the store to be more of a department store. Hmm. Uh, so more of a shopping experience, um, really just uh, updating you know, floors, lighting, and all of the, the aesthetics. Um, but that's been an exciting uh, project to see and um, just great to have, uh, you know, the local store manager and great team members there really giving back to our Morton community. So one of the first in the country and, and how, how was Morton chosen then? Just because of the demographics or what? Yeah, you know, I don't know all the details of, you know, corporate decisions on that, but in talking to the store manager, you know, the Morton store performs well. Um, it's been a while since there's been any updates to, to that store, you know, location. Uh, certainly, like I said, the daytime population that comes to Morton, um, I think those just all played into uh, the Morton location being a good fit for their future store. Did you grow up in Morton? I didn't grow up in Morton. I grew up in uh, Groveland area. I okay. uh, went to Pekin schools and uh, moved over to Morton uh, about eight years ago. And then, and, and right away, you got involved with the chamber and look yeah, at you came, taking off now. Yeah, came over for the, the role specifically. Um, and it's it's been a great, great endeavor. Just a great community um, and get to um, really take advantage of uh, activating the mission of the Morton Chamber of Commerce and the Morton Economic Development Council, uh, building strong, sustainable businesses in the community. All right, so back to Main Street, too. You have added, there's really a lot of boutiques, mm -hmm. and, and that makes it kind of fun. It makes it, you know, a, a nice day trip for the gals. Yes. The guys could probably Absolutely. figure out something, too, if they have a special occasion coming up. But what has attracted them to Morton? Yeah, I think certainly that, again, that connected community. Um, our small businesses uh, really work well together. And then as the Morton Chamber of Commerce and Economic Development Council, we're able to be another convener to bring them together. We started a small business roundtable, uh, just a way to, to bring those small business owners together, meet each other, cross-promote each other, and that's really taken off. Um, we do a, a fun uh, shop local every year around hometown holidays. And so that just really brings a spotlight to, to Morton and the shop local businesses. Uh, we sell uh, chamber checks. This was something that we were just, again, connected, supported community. Uh, through the pandemic, uh, we sold $25,000 uh, additional chamber checks for shop local impact than we normally do on a regular year. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think there's just, there's great storefront space. Um, we're definitely a walk walkable um, community, exactly. but certainly in that downtown area where you could just park and walk. Um, there's cover one side and yeah. then turn around, and go up the other. Well, stop and get something to eat and then go to exactly, the other side. Exactly. Uh -huh. Yes. But yeah, if you want a sweet treat or a delicious cup of coffee in a variety of variations, um, certainly uh, Morton is the the place to to visit. And then yes, a lot of other home decor and um, boutiques are are on the rise. So, what's your wish list for, uh, let's say, the next five years? for the village of Morton. And it's the village, not the city. It's, That's right, it's a village. It a village. Uh, we have some really great opportunities because of precision planting of uh, industrial property. Um, so I'm excited about um, you know current businesses that are needing uh, expansion opportunities to seek that space um, to really grow their businesses or who else can we attract uh, that would be a good fit for our community offering great um, employment opportunities and continue to see uh, the downtown build out. Just, uh, I think there's more aesthetics that we can do uh, you know, maybe some little uh, park-like areas. You know, so many people just love to get out and, and walk and experience. Mm -hmm. So those outdoor areas and elements that we can add to certainly the downtown area, but throughout the village would be um, uh, something that I would really um, 
be proud welcome. of and welcome. <laughs> and we have a lot of endeavors around um, bikeability as well. Uh, the village has put together kind of a master plan of uh, hopefully attaining other areas for uh, bike trail extensions. Uh, you know, that was which the would lead to Groveland, which would lead to East yes. Peoria? Or? Yeah, right. that was the first thing I noticed um, sitting in my office looking out on Jefferson Street of the number of people and families and little kids out walking and biking constantly throughout mm -hmm. our, our community. And so I think just those opportunities um, to give people a space to come and have that sense of belonging. And we need that today. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for sharing. Yes, I learned absolutely. a lot about Morton. It's and and I, the festival has always been a lot of fun. It's the only time I can wear my poncho that's orange. <laughs> yeah. um, rest of it, I, I don't do well in orange. But thanks for being here. Thank uh, you. The best of luck this year. And um, we'll check in with the uh, Give Back Probat and the Profits. Yes, sounds great. All thank right. you for having me. Well, thanks. And thank you for joining us. Hope you learned a lot about Morton and the Pumpkin Festival. Stay safe and healthy.